We are coming to you today from a rainy day in our van and we're kind of having a little bit of a miserable time so we thought what better time to talk to you about our van life regrets. And um, they start with number one regret is the Max Air fans. Yep. So we've had issues with these from day one and the more we use them the more things we find that we hate about them. It was probably our mistake by not buying the one with the, the rain hood on them. The ones you can buy with the rain hood, you can basically use them open in the rain and they have a fly screen on the outside of them, which our ones are just the ones that have the sort of flat cap on top. And I think the reason we went for those is because in the Delica we had a fan and it was same design, but when that lid was closed, they had a system where the air could still get in. So it formed a seal against the rain, but the air could still flow up inside the lid and it, you could still have full flow even with the lid closed. That Whereas, was the Fiamma turbo vent. Yeah, so I just assumed that the Max Air fan would be the same because, you know, it's more expensive and... And everyone raves about them. Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't really think about it and just went for it. But since we got those fans, it's a really basic flat lid that lifts up which exposes the fan and then underneath that on the inside of the van is the fly screen. So what we find is at night when you're sitting in the van and the light is shining out, it attracts all the insects which fly into the fan and get chopped up and then they sprinkle through the fly screen while you're lying in bed. That's disgusting. Max fans. Awesome. Frog just jumped in while the fan was moving. So that's one thing. The other thing Today we just left the vents open without the fans running and they weren't open fully but they were open maybe halfway and the, the rain, rain, sensor. rain sensor doesn't activate when the fans aren't blowing. So even though it's open and it's getting wet the rain sensor doesn't close the lid and then whenever you try to turn the fan on to like dry the van out the rain sensor then activates and doesn't let you use the fan. So It's a piece of crap. So unpopular opinion, we hate Max Air fans. That's not it. There's more. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> so the buttons on the actual fan that you press, they're labelled wrong. So R1 say open and close, which actually means fan speed up and fan speed down. It's so confusing. And the remote control has a lot of confusing buttons on it. If the vents open and you just want to stop the fan, if you press off, which is the only way to stop the fan, it closes the whole vent. So then you have to manually unwind it. Yeah, there's just a lot of like really clunky controls on the remote. With the controls that don't correlate with what they say they do, it's not exclusive to just one fan. It's not like they made one dodgy fan. Both of our, we have two fans and they are both exactly the same. They do not do what they say they do. When you're lying in bed at night and it does start raining and you've got the vent open and the fan going. It's really frustrating because it is so loud when it closes and it's just and it's not for a couple of seconds, it's, it's for, for like 10. a good 10 seconds. Yeah. And on top of that, the red flight for the rain sensor flashes as well. So you feel like you're in a sinking submarine. Yeah. Horrendous sound. And that it's stays on until shocking. you press it. Until you physically get up and turn it off. The other thing I looked at buying, there's rain dripping in here now. <laughs> um, Not that sound. Yeah, it's dripping out of that <sighs> twisty thing. I looked at buying just the rain hood for it, but it's $200 per fan. If we change that, we still have all the other problems. So, so we better off just changing the fan completely. And I can't really do that because if I buy a different brand of fan, then the roof already has about 20 holes in it and I don't want to put 20 more in. And then you're just opening yourself up to leaks and... Yeah, agreed. The other day, Ryan did come up with a solution to one of the problems and that was the bug problem. So you've been hearing us talk about how much we hate the bugs coming into these Max Air fans. So we're just at Bunnings now to sort that problem out. So you can see where all the flies come in and get absolutely chopped to bits because there's no fly screen on the outside. I'm gonna take this fan off cut a circular bit out and 
cut a circle in the center and then cable tie it under these three legs and hopefully that's high enough, high enough up that it doesn't catch the fan and the fly screen is rigid enough that it shouldn't sag when your hairs are stuck in there or rather. I don't think that's mine, it looks blunt. Oh. <laughs> that is not mine. <laughs> I made these foil covers out of leftover insulation just to fit in to fit in here just so we could block a, the vent if it was ever really cold or something um, so I'm just going to use that to trace around on this screen and then that'll be able to go up there these aren't the easiest to cut with can you just use normal scissors? probably but I'll blunt the shit out of them well, how do you think you're going to cut a circle with that? It'd be easier because I don't have to, I can just cut around. As you can see guys, the scissors are out. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like it fits well. It's curvy, but... So yeah. this white bit is slightly bigger than this. So I'll just cut it out. It doesn't go up and make gaps. Well, the hole was too small, so I just forced it around, which kind of deformed it a bit, but... Mm, this doesn't count as on these bits here. Yeah, and there's still enough space whenever I put this on. Yep. Yeah. Looking all spin. Not hitting at all. So I've just tested it full speed, both drawn in and going out, and it works okay. Beautiful. What's the blue like? It's, it hasn't changed. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. And it doesn't make any weird sounds either, which is. There's great. nothing catching on it, and the lid closes okay too because it's actually on the inside rather than the, the very outside. Yeah. So. Yeah, it doesn't change the airflow. We, we never had them up full anyway. No. Always. A lot of mice. We're not even going to see them on here. There's so many bugs. And you can see all the busy. bugs here. And like, Ryan cleans these probably, I'd say like once a fortnight, if you average it out. Mm -hmm. These are getting properly cleaned every fortnight and they're just full of bugs all the time. So that'll be a big improvement. It's all we can do other than changing the actual fans, which is pretty costly and time consuming experiment. But regret number two is these light switches. So we have these touch screen light switches and I'll take the blame for that. That was my idea. I thought they just looked really sleek and nice and I wasn't a huge fan of the um, knob turning ones and I'm pretty sure we couldn't get them at the time where we were or in time um, because we did build the van in Darwin, it takes such a long time for stuff to be delivered there. So anyway, I ordered these touchscreen light switch panels. They're really sensitive for one. If you touch it just a little bit too hard, it'll turn the lights on then off again really quickly. And then you just got to get that right amount of pressure to turn them on. Okay. The dimmer's great. I will say that the dimmer's great. If you're trying to turn the lights on in the dark and you don't know where the switch is, there's no actual switch. You can't tell where the on button is on it. All they need to do is put a little raised bit or a dimple where the on off button is. Yeah. Because it's a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square flat plastic panel. So there's no tactile response at all. Mm. It's just smooth and you, you just tap, 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 tap. To Guessing. Try and, <laughs> to try and find how to turn the light on. Yeah. So. That's a huge regret for me. If I could do it again, I definitely wouldn't put those in. Regret number three would be the plywood floor. And th this is more a problem with our van rather than just mm. normal vans. Like if you have a van with a decent floor in it, like if you buy a new or nearly new one, you'll probably be fine with 12 mil ply. But our van floor is really like damaged, really uneven and battered. If you want to see a video on that, I'll link that and we explain what happened with the floor there. So I tried packing the floor as much as possible, but just with us walking in and out of it, it has all started to sink. And I think the way we laid the play, plywood floor, 
uh, we done it in four sections starting from the back of the van and then working forward so there's a few like seams in the main walkways and i think if we were to do it again i would have it long ways the plywood sheets are 1200 mil wide and if we had it from one side of the van the seam would be under our kitchen bench and under the bed and we would never have to walk on it so it would be a full sheet up at the front yeah. and another full sheet at the back so it would only be one join which wouldn't be in a high traffic area and i would use 18 mil ply just to give it a bit extra strength and rigidity we used 12 mil at the time because that's all they had available and they're actually pretty low on 12 mil ply at the time as well so we use marine ply but the bunnings like i said we built it in darwin and just supplies in darwin are just so hard to come by they're really limited if we had access to the 18 mil we probably would have done that yeah our mattress again we had a really good mattress in our last van and we were on the east coast when we built that and i had really good contacts there from my old job we end up having to go with clark rubber and i've always recommended to anyone do not go to clark rubber because they're overpriced and their high density foam is really not high density like it's pretty average again we didn't really have a choice but um, we needed a foam mattress for the design of our bed because we needed it to be light but i think we would probably fork out the extra to even have something delivered if we could because the foam mattress that we have is really crap like it's really saggy we've now. only used it for a year now and after about six months it, it just started to feel really really soft it has like um indents indents in it and stuff I'd get a high density foam and then have like a memory foam on top. That's what I would do. Uh, another regret would be the three millimeter MDF paneling that we used. Now I will say that it's super cheap. It was $36 for a full uh, 1.2 by 2.4 meter sheet. And we used eight of them or something, didn't we? Yeah, something like so that. So that's all this stuff. It's, it's fine on the, on the doors, on the small areas with a lot of screws. You know it doesn't sag much but on the, the big flat panels you can see where there's not really many places to attach it to and it, yeah it just started to sag after a while it's just not really the look we were after either so i would go to the effort and just panel it with probably the same stuff that we'd on the roof with yeah yeah there's some areas where it's not really important like in behind the bed yeah for 36 bucks in behind there is fine down low under the cupboards and behind the kitchen and stuff where you don't see it after having actually used it i probably wouldn't use it again yeah agreed that is pretty much our only regrets in this build and really they are minimal i think the biggest issue that we have in this van is our choice of fan that's our biggest thing and that's our hardest thing to change as well if you have any other questions about any of those kinds of things let us know otherwise we'll see you next week Done.